Um, well, really hot like everybody else. It's uh, blistering summer, um, which is quite poignant because I'm talking about survival. And uh, survival is not what I talk about. A survival situation is not when you're on a kind of Ramirez expedition. Survival is life, basically, a life's a survival situation. And today, there's going to be a few things that we need. And I talk about, as my logo says, shelter, fire, water and food. And today's shelter is going to be our main consideration and obviously water. Um, behind us, we've got a lovely lake. So um, I'm finding it that I possibly want to go for a swim in a minute. Um, but um, really great event. Lots of people, more diverse than I thought. Um, was expecting more kind of wildlife in a way, but um, didn't realise that the wildlife area is tucked away down here in a tranquil bit behind, uh, behind the lake down there. And that's where I'm going to be on stage doing my talk later. Nice to meet a, a new audience. A lot of the stuff that I do is bushcraft shows, specialist survival shows and what have you. So we're looking to broaden out and basically tell everyone survival is not just an extreme point of view. It's something for everyday life. When you go out, have you, you, know, you take your keys with you. Have you got a torch? Would you need a torch? Do you carry an orange vest in your car in case you break down and you have to end up walking through the country lanes? All of these small things, to me, they're all survival. I have always been into scouting, it's a good question, and how I got into scouting was in the same way that most people do, going along through cubs, progressing through cubs into scouts, and unbeknown to me at the time, um, well I am, I'm dyslexic, chronically dyslexic, I find reading and writing virtually impossible. So years ago when I was at school, um, I don't know what it's like now, hopefully it's improved, but there wasn't actually a word dyslexia, I was just called stupid or thick, a daydreamer. You know, talk too much, entertain others, um, which is kind of really cool now because I get paid a lot of money and hopefully speaking the truth is where I've got to. That's kind of where I've got. And the scouts, to go back to your question, why were the scouts important to me and what did it do for me? They gave me my first real confidence and showed me that there was a place in the world where I could excel possibly where thinking outside of the box, seeing the small, soft edges of life, not being, con being able to concentrate into the box, was a kind of skill that I had, this kind of autistic, what is called autistic now, and kind of, I think they call it attention deficit disorder, where out in nature we need to be freely distracted, we need to constantly be noticing the small plants that we're walking on. And the skates really did give me that foundation of confidence uh, when I was getting in trouble a lot at school, I kind of rebelled from the system and being tried to be forced into a square kind of hole as a, as a round peg, if you want to say. Um, caused me a lot of problems. I got in trouble with the police, I got in trouble with the school, and it was really the scouts that kind of gave me that support as well and said, no, he's not all bad. You know, we believe in him. He's excelled. He's a good leader. You know, the reason that he won't fit into your hole possibly is because he is a leader. He is a pioneer. And the school system, the secondary education system was not set up to create managers and masters. It was to create employees. So for me, the scouts is all valuable. I have had a lot of adventures in my life. And one of my biggest challenges, I suppose, is um, goes back to my last kind of answer about the skates is finding your place where you're comfortable. Um, a lot of us suffer from insecurity, self-confidence issues and there's a kind of statistic bounded around it. It takes the average man to be 45 or the average woman to be 35 before they become successful in their own right, before they've realised there's enough life that's gone through them to realise actually all those people that told me I can't do this or I thought I was different, I didn't think my accent fitted in, I didn't think this fitted in, I didn't think the way my face fitted in, it doesn't really matter. You get to that place um, where I suppose you need to be comfortable and that's been my biggest challenge. I mean people, I, I live in a woodland, I mean I live in the middle of a wood, a quarter of a mile walk from the nearest house, I have to walk up through two meadows and two woods to get to it. And I've often been asked, am I, am I not scared? Am I scared of anything? Am I scared of living on my own? And what am I scared of? And for me, especially in the UK, there is no predator for me. Do you know what I mean, there is no predator. My heart, what I'm scared of is probably like everybody else, having my heart broken. You know, we are, it doesn't matter how tough your exterior is, we're still very sensitive creatures inside. Um, and my biggest fear, I suppose, is possibly success, failure, and yeah, looking after your heart. Why the outdoors is important for our mental health is fundamental to who we are. We're all stood here now and if we look around, we're all wearing different clothes, we're all speaking different accents, we all got different coloured skin, we've got different coloured trainers, you know what I mean? We're all supposed to be completely different people. 
okay? But we're fundamentally all the same people, okay? We're all still cavemen or cave women. It's not been that long. It's been a blip in our evolution, okay? We dress ourselves up and we masquerade as all these different people now. We're still cavemen. And the mental health issues, I believe, comes from our disconnection from the earth. The earth vibrates at between two to four ohms or hertz. Sorry, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not that good with my electronics, but it's one of those symbols, okay? And when we lived on the earth, and that's why occupational therapy, um, gardening became the first occupational therapy, I was actually plugging your hands in and reprogramming, recalibrating with the earth. The higher we now vibrate at possibly seven to nine hertz, it said, people live in cities these days with the concrete surrounding us, we're walking on rubber, we've lost all of our connection to the earth. And it, the further we go away from the earth and the further we lose our connection, the more we may not be conscious in our front conscious mind, but our subconscious, our animal mind, down here in our heart, is starting to get really scared. I am a qualified chef. I went to catering college. Um, I don't know how, but I got the highest qualification of anyone ever there. Um, highest qualification that year as well. So I was kind of one of only two or three top young chefs in the country. Um, I've been lucky enough to be offered jobs all over the world. I've worked in different places all over the world. And what would be my favorite dish that I've taken or my, my, my best influence, I suppose? Um, one of my favorite dishes, I, I would imagine, would have to be curry that I learned to cook in India. And maybe not just the dish curry, but the way that they actually made it. I trained as a gourmet which is a bit like being a, an artist where you're getting lots of different colours and you're trying to keep them defined in layers so you can see, you can taste the orange, you can taste the lemon, you can see the orange, you can see the yellow, you can see the blue, it doesn't all swirl together into a big kind of grey or brown sludge. Okay, and I trained as that, so it was all of these lots of different complicated ingredients and multiple different factions to a dish. And when I was in India and they were cooking on the fire in 42 degrees heat, everything was really quick and it was separated down. They only had five ingredients, so they make uh, an onion curry, a tomato curry, a cauliflower curry, not pulling it all in together. And I learnt simplicity and simplicity and learning to break it down and make each ingredient a champion of its own dish is possibly what I'd say is my, my best influence or my kind of favourite way of cooking or my favourite dish. Out of all the things I've done in life as far as adventure and experience, I'd have to probably say that my biggest experience or my biggest adventure was probably going up Ben Nevis which was one of the kind of major mountains for me in the skates again um, when skates has been kind of pivotal to me I can't keep mentioning them enough uh, and walking up there and kind of getting halfway up I'm thinking I was really tough and kind of yeah I could go anywhere I mean I was only a teenager and then kind of thinking I don't know if I can make it to the top actually I mean the snow came in and they said yeah only the older skates were allowed to go up and if it wasn't for my younger brother who's a couple of years younger than me, that said, I'm definitely going. I kind of don't know if I'd have been able to make it as well. There's no way I was letting my little brother go to the top of the mountain. Um, and they kind of use that analogy, reaching the top of the mountain. Um, yeah, and I suppose, yeah, the mountains are probably the most challenging. Going out on the sea as well in boats. Um, I've moved on, I became a professional charter skipper. I've been a commercial fisherman. And the ocean, and where I work now, coastal survival. And if it has to be the most challenging thing I'd say probably in the environment for me is the ocean. It can be the most rewarding, it's the best survival zone, the richest survival zone, but it can also be the most merciless and you never ever turn your back on the sea. I hope this weekend and coming here and speaking to people, I hope people are going to take away a different way of looking at survival. Realise that it's psychology first and foremost and that anything can become a survival situation. It doesn't just have to be like I say when you're kayaking through the rocky mountains or you're going to climb a mountain. You know if you if you rush into the shops and you need to get home with something and you rush in and you suddenly sit on your driving glasses because you didn't put them on the dashboard, all of a sudden you're in a survival situation and that's what I wanted to take people to take away, that survival is an everyday part of life. <laughs>